The holiday season is in full swing. If you're feeling overwhelmed and not sure where to get started, here are five videos all in one to help prepare you for the most organized and least stressful holiday season yet. Hi, welcome to day one of our holiday prep boot camp. My name is Shauna, if we haven't met yet, and I'm hopeful that today's task isn't too difficult to start our week off with. So I'm going to start off with a little story. I don't know about you, but when I go to the store at this time of the year, I always get sucked in by the wrapping paper. It's cute, it's pretty, it's new and exciting, and I just want to buy it all. Something I don't get sucked in by is tape. I never think to buy the tape, so every year I run out of it. Not this year though, because we're gonna do this task of going through all of our gift wrap supplies, inventory them, and then seeing do we actually need to buy something or not. I keep my gift wrap in an old hamper, and then in bins close by are where all of my gift tags, the tape, tissue paper, gift bags, anything like that, they live in there. That way I have everything right by each other. I've stored like items with like items. Makes it easy to find, makes it easy to put things away, makes it really easy for anyone in my family to know where to find the items. If you don't have a system set up for how to organize your gift wrap supplies, let me know in the comments. I'd love to share some other ideas. If something like this doesn't work for you, that way you can have all of your gift wrap supplies together too. So today we're gonna look over all of our supplies how many rolls of gift wrap do we have? Is there a lot on the roll? Is there a little bit on the roll? Do we have enough gift tags? What about tape? If you're like me, you know you need to stock up because you're going to run out because you never think to buy it. When you're inventorying, think about how many gifts that you're gonna be giving. And then I always like to scale up a little bit because you never know, is there gonna be a secret Santa that you don't know about? Do your kids wanna do a gift exchange with their friends? There's so many uncertain things when it comes to this time of year. So just knowing that you are fully prepared no matter the situation is never a bad thing. While we don't necessarily wanna have a lot of extra because then we have to store it in the off season, and let's face it, who's gonna to wanna to use holiday gift wrap during like the summer months? Having a little bit on hand can always be easily used in next season as well. If you feel like you need some more supplies, add them to your shopping list now. The selection is always best at the beginning of the season when everything's starting to come out. And that way, you know it's done, you are ready for it. So when the gifts start coming in, you know you're set. It's gonna save you extra trips later, less stress because you're all set up already. And if you don't need supplies and that section of the store always draws you in, avoid it at all costs. Stay tuned for tomorrow when we're going to continue with the whole gift wrapping and gift theme, but I'm gonna share a tip with you that has saved me so much stress since I've implemented it the past few years. Let me know in the comments below if you're more of a gift wrap person or a gift bag person. I go either way, I love both. It usually comes down to what gift I'm wrapping and how easy it is to wrap. If it's going to be challenging, gift bag all the way. Thanks for tuning in, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Welcome to day two of our holiday prep boot camp. My name is Shauna, if we haven't met yet, and do I have a horror story for you to kick off today's challenge. Many years ago, we were getting ready for the holiday gift giving season, got all my shopping done, got all the wrapping done, everything was good to go. Handing out gifts is going great. Well, then we did my husband's side of the family gathering. Take all the gifts, we go, put them under the tree, everything looks great, it's time to do gift exchange, we hand out all the gifts, and I realize we forgot a gift. Thankfully, the recipient was very gracious and totally understood and was okay with getting the gift later. It's still the thing that those of us with anxiety like lose sleep over. And then hearing stories from friends and family members how they've bought gifts and put them somewhere safe. And we all know what that means. You're never gonna find it again. And then they have to go out and rebuy a gift. I knew I had to find something that would prevent that from happening to me or my friends ever again. And it has been a lifesaver. I am all about finding tips and tricks to save stress any time of year, but especially during the holidays. This trip, this trick, gotta share it with you. 
enter the cardboard box. So before we start shopping every year, I take cardboard boxes that we have on hand. I always save them for like decluttering so all the donations can go right to the donation store. But having extras on hand for this time of year is like my number one priority. I take a box for like each family. So like my husband's side of the family will get a box. My side of the family will get a box. We do a gift exchange with my neighbors. They get a box. There's a box for like school. There's a box for our friends that we send gifts to. Each family or like get together gets a box. I write on the side of the box with a Sharpie, like the name or event. And then as gifts start coming in, whether we bought them in the store, or we've ordered them online, I put each item into its corresponding box. So let's say I bought my nephew a gift, it'll go in that box. If I bought, you know, my, my best friend a box, it'll go in her family's box. And then when it's time to wrap, I take the items out of that box. And as I wrap them, they go back into that box. We go to the get together, whether it's just bringing that box upstairs and putting them under my tree or going somewhere else, that box holds all those gifts and it goes into the car under my tree, whatever the situation. And I have not lost a gift or forgotten a gift since I've started implementing that. So part one of today's task, today's two tasks, it's the only day that has two, so don't worry, is to figure out an organizing system for your gifts as they come in and then get ready to go back out. If you already have something set up, Amazing. I'm so glad you have something that works for you. If you don't try doing the cardboard box method, and if you're like, I don't think that's going to work for me, figure out where gifts are going to go as soon as they come into your home. And then come up with a plan how you're going to make sure that all of those gifts get to their destination together. By figuring this out now, as soon as those gifts start coming in, you're going to know exactly where they live. Your home is going to stay tidier because you're not going to have shipping boxes everywhere. It's less likely you're going to lose something. And then you're going to know as soon as it's time to go to an event, you are set. You just have to grab that box, bin, bag, whatever you use, and you are good to go. Part two of today's task is setting up a gift wrapping station in your home. Where do you typically wrap gifts? Is that working for you? What I've been doing the past few years is I actually will set up a folding table down in my basement right by where all of my gift wrap, all of those things are. That way everything is in one area. I'll set my computer up on a shelf nearby. I'll watch a Christmas movie. I'll pull a box of gifts out, start wrapping it. If I have to like stop in the middle of it, I'll just throw the gifts back in the box. I can leave a mess on that table and it doesn't impact our daily routine. Now, I know not everybody has the ability to do that. In our old home, I couldn't. So what I did is I put all of like the gift wrap I knew I was going to use, all the, the gift tags, tape, scissors, all of that into a laundry basket that we weren't using. Some years I used a bin just because we didn't have a laundry basket available. And I would grab a box for whichever family or event we were doing, grab that box, take it to my coffee table, put it on the floor, grab my laundry basket of gift wrap supplies, put that on the floor on the other side of me, and then I would wrap after the kids went to bed. And as soon as I was done for the night, everything would go back in those two boxes or bins and put it away. And it really did not disturb the flow of the day. Before I started doing either one of these, I used to wrap on my dining room table. Like if it was wrapping gifts for like my in-laws or something, I'd be like, okay, the kids are playing or doing homework. I gift wrap on the table. I would lose track of time. And then all of a sudden, there's a mess on the table and it's dinner time and everybody's hungry and I have a mess to clean up. So the goal of this is to set something up that is going to impact your daily routine as little as possible. Whether you wanna set a folding table up now or wait, as long as you know what you're going to do, that is gonna make later that much easier. And our goal of this entire challenge is to just make our lives as easy as possible because we all know as soon as you know November is here, it just gets busy and crazier as each day goes by. And the more we can do now to make later easier, the more peace we're going to have, the more joy we're going to have, and we'll actually be able to rest this holiday season. So that's it for today's tasks. I hope it wasn't too much to do two tasks today. We're switching gears for tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. We're going to be doing something that goes along with one of my favorite parts of the holiday. Let me know in the comments below, do you wrap your gifts as soon as they come in the door or do you wait and kind of do them all at once later? I always plan on being the person who, oh, gift came in, I'm gonna wrap it, put it to the side now, but I always end up being the person who just kind of wraps, hopefully not the last minute, it has happened before, but I'm hopeful that by doing these things now, I'm gonna be able to like front load a little bit more so I'll be able to enjoy the actual holidays a little bit more. I hope you enjoyed today's tasks. I will see you tomorrow, bye. Welcome to day three of the Holiday Prep Boot Camp. My name is Shauna, if we haven't met yet. And today's task is something that I've been meaning to do every holiday season for as long as I can remember, but I've never managed to actually do it.
but not this year. This year, it's happening. One of my favorite things about the holiday season is the baking. I love making things, eating things, decorating things. It makes me so happy, but it never fails. I either always forget to buy an ingredient or I run out because I didn't stock up. This always leads to me heading back to the store during like crazy rushes. And then I have to deal with the stress of like finding the time to do it. I have to deal with the crowds, which I don't handle very well. And then I always, you know, end up buying an impulse purchase because I deserve a treat for dealing with the stress. No more of that this year. So today's task is we are going to sit down, just take a few minutes, write down any dish or treat that we know that we're going to be making. Now it's okay if we don't have menus fully fleshed out yet for our holidays, but if there are certain things that you make year after year or you found a recipe recently, you're like, oh, I am making this for this event or whatever during the holidays, sit down, plan that out, write down the ingredients that you are going to need. And then once you know that, you're going to divide it into two different lists. One is perishable items that you'll buy closer to the holiday gathering. And the other one is like shelf stable items that you can start purchasing now. The one item that has to go to the top of my list because I always, always, always run out of it is powdered sugar. I use it for icing my cookies. I use it for cinnamon rolls because my family is a huge fan of cinnamon rolls. I make a lot of them during this time of year. I always run out. Powdered sugar, top of my list. Cranberry sauce always needs to be on there. If we do not have the jelly in a can cranberry sauce, I think my kids and I might throw like a big temper tantrum. And I know that as soon as Thanksgiving gets close, it's going to be harder to find. So we need to make sure that we grab that now. Other items that I know we're gonna need on that list will be like the holiday peanut M&Ms because we always make my husband a special granola with those. I'm gonna need like the peanut butter chips. Like they're like the chocolate chips, but they're peanut butter for the truffles that I make every year. I know powdered sugar, of course. I'm gonna need canned pumpkin and I'm gonna need a gluten-free cake mix because there are certain dishes I make year after year. So just grabbing those now. That way I know that I have them. I don't have to worry about them being in stock or not. I get to avoid all the crowds. Making sure that I grab those now is gonna save me a lot of time and stress in the long run. So like I said, if you don't know exactly what you're making now, that's okay. But as soon as you know, make sure you purchase them as soon as possible. Like I said, so you don't have to go to the store, deal with the crowds, forget things that things might be out of stock. The sooner you can get them, the more time you have on the off chance that something was running low one week and then it'll just be better for you in the long run. Hopefully this task wasn't too stressful. I know this one is kind of hard because you don't exactly know what you're making yet maybe. So it's okay if you can't do it now, just do it as soon as you can. Tomorrow we're gonna switch gears a little bit more and we're gonna be tackling something that's a little controversial. So make sure you tune in for that one. Let me know something in the comments that you look forward to either making or eating this time of year that you only get during the holiday season and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Welcome back to day four of the holiday prep boot camp challenge. My name is Shauna if we haven't met yet and today's task is a little controversial. So today we are going to be getting our dishes ready for the holidays. There are two schools of thought. I've heard pros and cons, very strong for both sides. I have been on both sides. I've definitely chosen one now, but do you use the fine china, like the really nice dishes for the holidays, or do you use paper goods? So there are two different tasks. You choose one of them depending on which one you do. So if you use like the really nice dishes, your goal for today, your task for today is to find them. Maybe this is really easy for you. Maybe you keep your dishes on display in a really nice cupboard somewhere. So just go through, make sure, okay, are they still in good condition? Do they need to be washed? Do they need to be wiped down? Is there any pieces I'm missing? You know, oh wait, this butter dish is missing. Find everything now that you know you're going to need and just make sure it's ready. If you store it somewhere like the attic or the garage or the basement, make sure it's in an easy to reach spot for later because the last thing you're gonna to wanna to be doing either the day before or the day of hosting an event is trying to find the dishes, get them washed, finding they're broken. So making sure we do that now well in advance is gonna give us time to like wash them, repair them, figure out a backup plan maybe, and just make sure that we are set so on the day of our actual event, we can enjoy it and relax and we won't have everything to worry about that day. Maybe use paper plates instead. So today's task for you would be to go through what you have on hand. Do you have enough plates, cups, bowls, saucers, 
anything like that. Forks, spoons, knives, all of that inventory of what you have. Do you have enough of that? If there's anything that you still need, put it on your shopping list so you can pick it up as soon as you go out shopping next time. Now, pro tip, also a little controversial, is if you're going to be replacing anything, maybe not getting the holiday specific items. Now, I know that they're festive, but if you purchase them and you have a lot left over, you have to store them until the next holiday season, which is just time managing them, finding space to store them. It could easily turn into clutter. And then are you going to remember that you even have them for next year? My tip would be either get like the, the nice plain white plates or saucers or bowls or to get something more everyday themed because you're going to be more likely to once the holidays are over still use that like on a busy night or your kids are having friends over it's much easier to just take a paper plate sometimes and throw it out rather than to be piled up with a lot of dishes so my tip if you're doing that route maybe not buy the holiday ones but maybe you're the kind of person who doesn't care a plate is a plate for you then go ahead get the fun fancy ones totally up to you just make sure that whatever you're purchasing you know that you're going to have to store any leftovers. So like I said, I've been on both sides. I used to use the fancy dishes and I loved them. They were so pretty, but I'm not the kind of person who would store them every day like out for, you know, to look at. And on the days of the holidays, the last thing I want to be doing when my family and friends are around is standing washing a lot of dishes. And by the time everybody's gone for the day, I'm too tired to wash them. Plus that packing them up or unpacking them, the storing them was just a lot of time and effort that I didn't want to be spending on something like this. So in the past few years, probably going on a decade now, we have really been a paper plate person. It's more casual. You know, I know some people are like, oh, but it's not fancy. We're really not fancy people. So to us, it's fine. We do call it our fine china still, but just knowing that at the end of the meal, we can just take things, we can throw them out. It just makes us be able to enjoy the event and being with the people we care about the most more. So been on both sides. I have enjoyed both. Both have pros and cons, like I said, but whichever one you choose, either make sure everything is ready or make sure that you know that you're stocked up or what you need to purchase still. I can't believe that tomorrow's the last day of our boot camp already. And while tomorrow's task, you might not think that you need this task, I would still encourage you to tune in because life is unpredictable and you might thank me later that you did this task. Let me know in the comments below, are you more of a paper plate kind of person for the holidays or are you more like the, the really nice pretty dishes? All right, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Welcome to day five of the boot camp. Today is the last day already. I don't know about you, but by doing these tasks, I'm starting to feel less stressed for the holidays, which is fabulous. My name is Shauna, if we haven't met yet. And for today's task, you might think you don't need it, but trust me, stay tuned. You might, you might thank me later that we did this. Today's task is preparing for guests that we are going to have this holiday season. I know not all of us are hosting guests this year and that's okay, but I still want to challenge you to participate in today's task because you never know what may happen. So guests, story from a few years ago, we were hosting my side of the family for Christmas and my parents left a little bit earlier than my brother and his family. They all, both of them all kind of live close together. So my parents drove home, my brother and his family stayed to hang out and play games a little bit longer, and my parents called to let us know that they had made it home. But it was a little bit later than we had like anticipated for them to be calling, and they said the weather out where they lived, it's only an hour and a half away, was really bad, that my brother and his family might want to anticipate staying in the night. Did I anticipate having five guests that night? No, I really didn't. Did we make it work? Yeah, we did, but life is unpredictable. You never know when somebody may have to stay overnight due to weather or other circumstances. So making sure we're prepared for those unexpected events is really going to take a lot of stress off of our shoulders for the holidays. So today's task is to figure out guest sleeping arrangements. Do you have a couch that unfolds to a bed? Make sure that it still works and it's not broken. Do you have air mattresses? Do you know where they are? Do they have holes in them? Last year, our best friend stayed with us for two weeks and we didn't know that our queen air mattress had a hole in it. So the first night that they were here with us, there was a hole. They apparently tried pumping it up a couple times during the night 
and ended up giving up. So they basically slept on the floor that night. So the next day we rushed out and bought a new one for them because there was no way our friends were gonna stay on the floor for two weeks. Are your extra blankets easy to find? Are they clean? Do they smell a little musty from being in storage maybe? Do you have a couple extra toothbrushes? Little things like that can really make unexpected guests or even expected guests who may have forgotten something make that whole experience a lot easier. Even purchasing things like maybe some extra coffee or hot cocoa or even a box of pancake mix can really make make this just an easy experience for you just to help you feel more prepared for when life throws curveballs because we know one thing about life it's very unpredictable. The one thing I really want you to take away from today from me telling you to prepare for guests is do not feel obligated to go out and buy anything. And this is more just an exercise in making sure that we are ready and that we have things on hand that are ready in a moment's notice for guests. Feel free to go out and get the pancake mix, maybe extra coffee, maybe extra toothbrushes, but make sure it's things that you know you're going to use as well. Because if you go out, let's say like, oh, I might have guests, they might like coffee. I don't drink coffee. Don't go out and buy a coffee maker and coffee because then it's just going to sit around and become clutter. It'd be easier to just go to a local coffee shop, grab a menu if they still have paper menus, or download the app for the local coffee shop just so when your guests arrive, you don't have coffee for them. It's really easy to place an online order. Go pick it up for them. Make sure you're not spending money you don't have or don't need to spend because then we can cause extra clutter in our homes and we really don't want that. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope these tasks were helpful and alleviating some stress for the upcoming holiday season. What was your favorite task? Was there anything you wish I would have covered? If so, let me know because I might cover that in an upcoming video or tuck it away and maybe do another boot camp next year if you guys want that. So let me know that in the comments below. But thank you again for joining me. I had a blast. I hope you have an amazing, peaceful, less stress holiday season. I will talk to you later. Bye.